Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Alien Frontiers Edition X by Starling Games. This is a two to four player game that also has an expansion set for five or six players, takes roughly 60 to 90 minutes, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Alien Frontiers, you and your other galactic friends are out in search of the galaxy's different resources and, of course, to terraform different locations on this planet here. You will be using your dice and or ships to roll and place on many different facilities along the game board, gathering resources, uh, building a colonist hub, being able to construct one or just simply to terraform instantly, all while at the same time gathering your alien tech, your asteroids, dealing with your agendas, and of course utilizing your nuke specific faction. This is edition X which means there are going to be three new bonuses to this version compared to the original one. The first thing is the outer belt. This is an entire board here that illustrates different asteroids that you can place your ships on to gain and utilize on your next turn. You're going to have agendas which you can use from the orbital market which will give you unique benefits, uh, will give you unique bonuses like one victory point whether it be an in-game inject objective or you can use it as an end game objective. And then of course you're going to be having the factions. These are specifically chosen at the beginning of the game where you're going to take these guys and have a unique ability for yourself as well as a bonus ability that people or yourself can do. All in all, it's pretty much the same style of game as the original Alien Frontiers with a lot more added. We'll talk about the setup, we'll talk about how to play, and then our review. The setup of the game is quite simple. Now, before I talk about it, I just want to let you know that this will be the setup for the agendas, the outer belt, and the main factions as well as the base game. To begin, place the main game board down in the middle of the table. It's the large one, within reach of all players. Then you will take your fuel and ore and place them on the sun and moon respectively. Next, take the territory tokens and place them based on the name. Pole foothills will go on top of pole foothills. There are eight total on the planet, and if you're playing with the outer belt, there's going to be one at the very bottom. Then you will take the agendas deck and shuffle it and place it next to the orbital market. It can be on or off the board. The outer belt is a secondary board that is attached to the moon side. Go ahead and place that on the right hand side of the game board. Take your asteroid deck and remove a certain number of cards from it. I believe it's two, it'll tell you in the rules. Take the asteroid die and place it down next to the board, as well as flipping four face-up asteroids and placing them in the card spaces presented on the side. After you've done that, you're then going to give each player three dice or ships, which we can use as the same word interchangeably. In this game, it is a setup for two players, thusly there are three green and three red ships in the maintenance bay. You can include, or you will be including, three extra ships of the same color for each player next to but off of the board to represent a pool that you can gather as you acquire them from the shipyard. You'll have these three constructors that you'll set aside. These will be used for specific cards. And you can go ahead and set aside any of the additional cards you may or may not be using in the game. The last main board setup is going to be over here, and this is just the victory point tracker. Each player who is playing is going to have a rocket ship and you'll place that rocket ship on the zero space of the victory point counter. The alien deck is off of the board. If you just shuffle that up, you deal out three face up and place it next to the deck in a pool for uh, people to buy later in the game. Now as far as players go, each player is going to get eight colonies and these are what they're going to use to gain points throughout the game but also end the game. Each player is going to start with a free alien tech. Just draw one from the top of the deck and give one to each player face up. Additionally, each player is going to get a faction. To choose factions, count the number of players, add one from the deck of factions, shuffle them up, and then give it to the player who's in last. That player who's starting last, in last position, is going to be picking, and then it'll go all the way up until the first player. And then each player should have their own faction. Give every single player all the cards they could need. One card will be an illustration, an example of what your faction does. One is to determine what player count you are, so player one, and then the fields and what they do. And then the other two are player references. They will tell you about the symbols in the game, and they're going to tell you about the different locations that you can go to and what they do. Last but not least is the faction cards. You'll draw two of them from the faction agendas and then you're going to let players use them throughout the game. After that, you're pretty much ready to go. All right, so how you play. As a side note too, 
based on your player count and what turn you are in the order, you're going to get bonus resources. But playing the game is very, very simple. You are going to, at the beginning of your turn, check to see how many ships you have in your maintenance bay. Then you will take those ships, aka dice, and you are going to roll them. Once you roll them, you'll be able to place them on any of these spaces here. There are quite a few of them as well as your faction board and when playing with the outer belt, each of the different asteroid cards. We'll go over a couple spaces because the game's turns are very simple. Roll the dice, place them, and then after that, if you have more than eight resources in your pool here, you have to discard down to eight and, and then you pass your turn. <laughs> so this is the solar converter. This is going to allow you to get fuel based on the number that you're placing here. If you place a one or a two here, you'll get one. If you place a two, a three or a four, you'll get two. And if you place a five or a six, you are going to get three resources. Another thing to know about each of these different locations here is that if they have a three or a four on them, that means you can only place there if your game contains three or four players. The orbital market, you are able to place two of the same type of die here. And then your sun resource multiplied by that number will generate you one of these specific ores. Um, so you can do a one and a one and it'll ge generate you one and you can do a one for one trade. You can do as many of you as you'd like. This for this based on the number times sun. It's also a way for you to draw two new faction cards as well. And when you're playing with the faction agenda cards, this is the main way you're going to be getting these guys. The alien artifacts, the, the, these guys up here. When you play dice, you have to play dice equaling eight. And there are two things you can do. One, you can place any die here and refresh the market. And then two, when you place a die here, after refreshing or not, you are able to gather a card, but only if your total is equal to eight or more. And if you place another, another two dice here, equaling eight or more, you can take another card. But each time you play one die, and you can do these individually, you can take uh, these market cards and remove them. So you can search through this deck until you find what you want. The Raiders Outpost. In order to play here, you are going to need three dice in consecutive order. Four, five, or, four, five, six, one, two, three, three, four, five. When you do this, you can take four resources from a player or a card from them, whether it be an asteroid or an alien tech card. Also, you're able to actually push people off of this space. If your straight, your small straight, is higher than theirs, you can bump them off to the maintenance bay and place your own there. The lunar mine is simple. Place a die there and get an ore. But the next die that's placed there must be higher or the same as the previous one. So if I play a four here, my next die has to be a four, five, or six. If a six is played here, the only die that can be played here is a six. And for each one, you'll just simply take one of these ores. And these are the two main ways of gathering your fuel and ore. Solar converter, lunar mine. The colony constructor. This is kind of a late game thing, but when you have three dice that are exactly the same number, you can place these guys here, pay three ore, and you can take one of your colonies and place it down on any location on the moon here or over here on the Bish Expanse. Over here is the colonist hub, the main way you'll be placing down these little colonies here. For each die that you place, and it doesn't matter the type of die, you will take a colony and place it down on the farthest end on the left hand side of the location you've placed. And you can only have one location. You can't place another die on the bottom area if you already have one on the top. And for each additional die you place down, you'll move that colony that many spaces. When the colony gets to the seventh space, you can spend a fuel and an ore and take the colony and you can then go ahead and terraform a location and thusly gain control of that area. The shipyard. Well, how do you get more dice? The most important thing most people want to know in a worker placement, you will take two dice that are the same, doesn't matter which ones, and you will pay the cost. It'll start with one fuel and one ore, then it'll go to two fuel and two ore, and three and three. When you pay the cost, you get another die and you'll place it in the maintenance bay, which means you'll get it for next turn. Then you have finally the terraforming station. You can place any six that you want here and you can pay a fuel and an ore. And when you do that, you are then going to be able to terraform onto a location. Sounds good, sounds really cheap, but the thing is the die that you place there is removed and is put back into the pool, which you're then going to have to get from the shipyard once again. And that is pretty much all the different things you can do on the main game board. Uh, the next things, that, the other things that you can do that have been added to this game for uh, the Edition X, basically all the three little expansions, is the Outer Belt. 
On this side of the game board, there are four different asteroids. If you want these cards, you can take them as long as you place die based on the requirements. Each card is going to have a certain number of pips on them in the middle, or I should say little symbols. They're usually going to be navigation symbols or a die symbol. This is one navigation symbol, and currently this card is in the top portion. The top portion is 1, 2. The next portion is 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, and 5, 6. To take this card, I will need to play a 1 down in this area, and I could take this card. If this card was in this area here, it would need to be a 2, 3, or a 4, and if it was over here, a 3, 4, or 5. If the card has multiple symbols, you'll have to place multiple of that type on the navigation chart. And if it has multiple symbols of navigation and a symbol of a specific die type, whether it be a 6, a 4, or 2, you have to include that die as well. These cards, when you gather them, they are going to be set aside, turned to the side, most of them at least, and you will not be able to use them until the next turn. They are going to be considered in tow. On your next turn, they will flip over or flip up, and you can then go ahead and utilize these cards. The cards that have a symbol with an, a red marker on the top left are going to indicate that you can use them instantly, which is a nice little twist to it. And those are pretty much all the different action spaces that you can do. So let's talk about the different aspects of the game. You have the agenda deck. The agenda deck is basically going to ask you, in the game, did you do these things? And if you did, you can flip these guys over and you can gain a victory point. You could also save them to end game, and if you have the requirements at the end of the game, you could flip them over instead and gain one point. All agendas are worth one point, and all of them have an in game and an end game ability. You are also going to have the alien deck. The alien deck is going to be a twofold. One is the very top of most of them, you can pay a cost and do the ability. Each card you can only do once a turn. If you want to, instead of taking the ability or using the ability once you've gathered it, you can discard it. Each discard can only be used once a turn, and only one card can be discarded on a turn. These will give you valuable resources, allow you to reroll your dice, give you victory points, and so on. The asteroid deck is very similar, but instead, most of them are just going to be discarded, and you can't use them until the next turn. Additionally, when playing with the outer belt, you'll have to roll this meteor die. When you roll the meteor die and it lands on a meteor, these cards will all shift. If it's a far card, it will be discarded, and a new card is going to come out. And this will be passed from player to player when playing with the outer belt. But now that you know about the different cards here, uh, I guess the other things to talk about are the factions and then the locations and how to win the game. <laughs> the Dark Space Explorer. So I've got these guys. There's the Homesteader Unions. Each of them do a different unique benefit for each player. Uh, uh, this one here is going to let you get cards easier from the artifact. You'll be able to draw two of them. Um, this one over here, instead of on the seventh space of the colony hub, it's going to let you utilize the terraforming action on the sixth space, so it'll cost you one less die. And then each of them also has the unique ability for you to place die on the upper left-hand corner. When you do that, you'll get a benefit. This one here says I can just move a die, move my colony up on the hub. If my opponent wants to use this, it's going to cost them one resource of the indicated type in the top left. It's kind of like a tax. And it goes to me for them to use my location. The moon here is basically the main portion of the game. It's how you're going to be mainly scoring victory points. You're going to get victory points whenever you take a colony and place it on the board. You'll also gain victory points if you control the location. To control it, you have to have more colonies than anybody else. So while I have this, I have this benefit, whatever it might be. And I'm also going to get two victory points. I'd move myself up on this track here too. If at one point or another, my opponent comes and settles here, they will score a victory point. And then sadly, because I do no, I no longer control this area, this will go back and I'll lose a victory point. So you'll constantly, constantly be losing and gaining victory points throughout the game. And you're constantly going to be placing these guys out. Some of these cards have very powerful abilities. This one here says you only have to pay one and one resource, uh, well, you pay one and one less resource uh, when using the shipyard. So instead of one and one, it's free. And then when it's two and two, it's one and two, one and one. And then three and three is two and two. So you can make it so your dice are cheaper to gather as you get your ships. Others are going to give you bonus die, etc., etc. There are multiple different factions in the game and each of them come with unique aspects to them, whether it be a mini Mars rover, or a unique faction die. And each of them also has a card explaining how all of them work. Some are better in a higher player game. But 
That's basically how the game works. You are going to take your die from the maintenance bay, you are going to take the asteroid die, and you are going to roll them. Then you are going to place them anywhere you want on the game board, and apply the effects. If you rolled on the meteor, you would move the meteors down, or the asteroids down, removing cards or adding new cards. Once you've gathered all your effects, you will leave the dice here. They do, they do not go anywhere. And the next player is going to take their turn, and they will roll their dice. They will also place down on the different locations, and rinse and repeat. Uh, once it is your turn, you'll just take them off of the board or from the maintenance bay. They could be there, they could be on the board. It'll block certain spaces. And you'll continue. As you place these guys out, you'll score victory points, you'll gain area locations, and eventually, <laughs> hopefully, you'll place them all out and have the most victory points and win the game. The moment somebody places their last colony out, the game will trigger the ending, and whoever has the most points at that time is the winner. Don't forget to include your end of game objectives. So what is Alien Frontiers? This is a dice placement slash worker placement game. You're rolling dice, placing them on different locations, and gaining abilities. The main thing you'll start with doing is gathering the minerals and resources you need to build ships, which will then allow you to gain cards and holiness hubs. If somebody's a little too far ahead, you can use the raider outpost, but mainly it's all gonna come down to the roll of dice, making sure that you get the rolls that you need. And how do you do that? Using alien tech cards, of course, and asteroids. Asteroids typically will give you resources, while tech is gonna give you the ability to re-roll unique benefits to spending the fuel to gain your unique powers. Like for instance, I could pay a fuel here to re-roll any number of my unplaced ships. So if I roll these guys and I don't like them, I can pay a fuel and re-roll them again. Very powerful. The main thing about the game, I suppose, when you're adding the outer belt, is never forgetting to roll this die and trigger its effects every turn, if it rolls on the asteroid side. The game is going to be played over a number of rounds. Because the game can end instantly, you have to be prepared and watch other players and see how many colonies they're going to have out at any given point. Because one turn might be their last turn, and you kind of have to be prepared for that as the game goes on. Gaining these locations is very important and very powerful. Each of them has a unique benefit, and always don't forget to use the Blish expansion that over expanse that over there has a power as well. It'll let you use these cards that usually can't be used on the same turn and let you use them instantly if you control that area. Controlling areas is also important for two reasons. One, you get the power, and two, when you control the area, you get a bonus point. Points in this game are few and far between. You're gonna get points for placing down these colonies, points for controlling these areas. Some of the cards in each of the decks is gonna provide you with bonus points, whether it be alien tech, maybe you'll find a monument or a city, or asteroids might have a unique asteroid with gold in it, scoring you a point. Sometimes your agendas might be fulfilled and you can wait till end of game to surprise your opponents, or perhaps you're going to use them instantly in game so that you can gather more agendas because you can never have more than three face down agendas, but you can have as many face up ones as you want. And all of those are considered scored and they'll move you up on the track there. They're also a good way of players not being able to steal them from you because the Raiders outpost can steal your asteroids and they can steal your alien tech, thusly reducing your points if you have a strong hold of points in your cards. Another cool aspect to the game is these guys here. These are your factions. They provide you with a unique powerful ability and a location where anybody can go for an extra thing that they can do. And if they go to yours, you're gonna score extra resources that they'll have to give you in order to utilize that space. This game is of course similar to most games when it comes to placement slash worker placement. Uh, you are going to be trying to go to the shipyard, you are going to want more ships. More ships means more actions, it means more resources, it means more valuable spaces that you can go to. And gathering them is important. If you gather enough of them quickly, you might want to use them to terraform because it's cheaper and faster to do when placing down colonies. It might be also good to use this space, placing down colonies for basically <laughs> one die and two resources, when you're very, very close to end game to surprise your opponents. The solar converter is all about using the higher end dice for higher resources, while the lunar mine is all about losing lower resources so you can get as many as you possibly can. The artifacts, you always want to use more you always want to use two of them, and if you can use just enough to score that eight value, you can then get a card and you can shuffle through this deck. And you're gonna be shuffling through this deck a lot to find the cards you need, whether it be because they give you victory points or because maybe some of your agendas require specific cards from this deck. And the same can be said for the asteroid deck. 
The call on a sub is a nice easy way to progress. When you have nothing to do with a die, there's no value to it, it's basically just a one that's kind of sitting around, you can place your die over here on the hub and that will allow you to start putting your colonies out and moving them across the board, thusly placing them out onto the moon. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. It's a little bit area control. There's a little bit of aggression. You can play with this Raiders outpost to be a little aggressive. And if you don't like playing aggressive in a worker placement, you can just kind of ignore this space and, that, and that's fine. But I noticed that when players start getting on a roll, this becomes very useful to slow them down in their progress. In a two player game, it works excellent. This is a great two player game. If you like two player games, this is gonna feel really good. Some games don't feel super great when playing two and you wanna play a three or a four player game, but this one works well at all player counts. Of course, it does get better with more players because spaces start becoming a little bit more limited. Some spaces will open up and you're gonna have a little bit more competition when it comes to either gathering alien artifacts or being able to build your ships. And of course, being able to use the terraforming station because you do not get your dice back from the board until it is your turn, thusly only opening up spaces that you were previously on. And then you also have this cool little aspect too. This Sparrow's Desert has a unique bonus die that you can gain. It's another way of gaining a seventh die, which of course more die equals more power in the game. So never forget to utilize this. The overall quality of the game and artwork is excellent. This is a top-notch game, a triple-A game, if you might would say. The board is high quality, it is thick, it is beautiful, the artwork looks wonderful. The main game box looks great, everything makes sense as to where you place things and where things go and why things are what they are. Uh, the also unique little twist to it being that each of these spaces has a nice little symbol on it displaying the number of players. Some games do this right, some do it wrong, and in this case I think they do it excellent. I already know which spaces are mine when I'm playing a two-player game just based on looking at this as I'm placing it down. And after the first round, you've pretty much got this game instantly. The, 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 the game is so, so non-complex when it comes to rolling dice and placing them down because your turn is very simple. Your turn summary is literally just half of a playing card. Gather dice, roll dice, place where you can, and then check to make sure you don't have more than eight resources and pass and continue playing until somebody hits that last colony onto one of the main spaces of the game board. Calculate your points and then your agendas, see who has the most, and that's the end of the game. But the complexity of where you choose and how you can choose and what you're going for and how you're using your agendas, it just prov provides this nice, really cool, really crisp playing experience. And you are not always going to be doing what your opponents are going to be doing. And sometimes cards you'll lose from the top of the deck that are not going to come back for a while. And that's part of your agenda. So maybe you want to use the end game or the in game abilities. And that can kind of change your play style. Uh, it just, it's just a really, really wonderful area, dice, area control, dice placement type of a game. If you've played Alien Frontiers and you want some more content, this is obviously gonna come with the Outer Belt, which is like the Asteroids, which kinda just feels like the Alien deck with some unique little twists and turns. The Agendas, which gives you more victory points and has a nice surprise ending in some cases. And then the Player Factions, giving you additional locations that you can land on, as well as a unique bonus ability. It's all just more fun, more extra stuff that you would enjoy when playing this game. Nothing completely changing the mechanics or stylization of the game, but it kind of straightens things out and kind of gives you a bit more play when it comes to placing and people aren't going to know necessarily if they've won the game once that last colony has been deployed. Overall, an excellent game. This is going to get my seal of approval. I'm going to be keeping this game in my collection in my main room. So that just tells you how much I like Alien Frontiers. Edition X. I would play with all of the expansions too. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Alien Frontiers Edition X by Starling Games. If you're interested, there is a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Our new game Zero Day is coming out soon, maybe in the next three or four months here. Look forward to that, and I'll show you more in the upcoming videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and hit that subscribe button if this is more than the first video you've watched from us, if this is the second or third, maybe we've earned your subscription by now. And if we have, please do push the button. We greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to exploring the bounds of space with you next time.